Yes, thanks again for joining us on this webinar. The topic today will be how to use sealed enclosure cooling to get the most life out of your automation equipment. Control cabinets have higher component density, creating more internal heat loads. As you can see here in the picture on the left, this is something typical that happens in summertime in some facilities because of the overheating of the control components. Either a cooler has died or there's just not enough cooling capacity within the control cabinet to keep the systems running. As devices get hotter and hotter, they start to derate and eventually you do reduce their life expectancy because higher heat is the big destroyer of microprocessors and all of the windings and things that make systems work properly. On the right hand side, you can see that this control cabinet, because of the way it's designed, has picked up a lot of dust in the bottom. And eventually that could cause an arc or bridging effect across some terminals that would cause a short, which would then cause downtime in the system. Today's industrial control cabinets can also be mounted outside. And when they're mounted outside, they do require sealing. And so with our HSC, heat sink coolers and heat pipe cooler, heat exchangers, this can accomplish cooling in those cabinets that are mounting outdoors and still be completely sealed. We also have environmental coolers that can be placed in a NEMA 4X environment, which means they can be exposed to chemicals um, that are VOCs that are in the air, uh, anything that could damage a metal surface or a fan. These devices are sealed and can be protected against salt spray and other things that could damage the cooler itself and the equipment itself. Our products are rated by NEMA. And one of the things we did have tested, all of these products that you see today in the heat exchanger area are UL recognized or listed products. We also had our systems tested to UL 50E, which is a high pressure spray uh, designation, which means that they were hit with a high pressure spray nozzle for a particular uh, time period. And that makes sure that we didn't get any leaking around the seals and so on. You may get from time to time references to the National Electrical Manufacturers ratings and the International Electrotechnical Commission ratings, which is called IEC, which is the European or international uh, conversion from NEMA to the IP rating. We've done our best here in these two columns to relate the IP rating to a NEMA rating. Although there is no direct match, these are what we would deem to be the closest uh, potential matches for those two standards. So today we have two cooling types explained. Above ambient cooling, ACT sealed heat exchangers can be applied. Now the way these are applied, above ambient cooling means that the inside of the cabinet always must be hotter than the outside of the cabinet for the heat exchanger to be applied properly. In other words, if the cabinet is hotter on the outside, there's no way for the heat to be dissipated through the enclosure cooler. So we can't reject a hot inside cabinet to a hotter external cabinet temperature. So we have to make sure those things are happening. If uh, for whatever reason and you're in an environment where the outside of the cabinet is continually hotter than the inside, we would suggest a sealed ACT air conditioner unit or thermal electric cooling unit. So we have two approaches to the market. So both of these are sealed and will keep your cabinets from dust, moisture, and other contaminants that could damage your automation equipment, which would cause a shorter life. So here's two common above ab, uh, ambient cooling applications. As you can see here, the one on the left is a common fan cooler system. So we're drawing air in the bottom of the cabinet and then exhausting through the top of the cabinet. 
The one on the right is the ACT HSC, or heat sink cooler application. So on the outside of the cabinet, we're taking in outside air, going over the sealed center component, which is uh, bonded between the interior and the exterior. And so the air is coming from the outside, hitting the fins to the back plate and then exhausting out through the sides. The same exact thing is happening on the inside of the cabinet. Air is drawn through the center of the cooler and then driven out through the sides. And then that center bonding plate is where the conduction takes place. So we reject the heat through that center plate. Take a look at ways, and these are very common questions on how to uh, estimate internal heat loads. There are several methods, and the first one we'll discuss is called the input-output method, where you count the electrical conductors and what their values are coming into the cabinet. And then you take the electrical conductors going out of the cabinet and what the wattage rating is that you expect to see on those conductors. So if we have 11,040 watts coming in and we have 10,350 watts going out, you subtract those two and know that you have an internal heat load of about 690 watts. So you would have to pick out the appropriate cooler to address that wattage. The next method is called our component heat load method, which takes a look at all the different devices inside of the cabinet, AC, DC drives, PLCs, motor starters, transformers, solid state relays, power supplies, monitoring and measuring, converting electronics, and indicator lights, maybe HMIs, you name it, whatever's in the control cabinet, you need to try to figure out what the heat load is that these generate. Now, the good news is, is that most electronics today are 95%, maybe 90% efficient. So that's what you account for in heat that will come off of those components. This slide basically shows you some of the basic ratings on those components and what their wattage uh, dissipation rates can be. To give you an example, like a relay would probably generate about 12 watts of heat. A contactor, depending upon its size, up to 40 watts of heat, and so on. If we take a look at specifically motor drive applications, I put three conversions up in the top left. One, uh, what one watt equals for BTUs, what one horsepower equals to watts, and also one horsepower uh, values equal to BTUs. So from there, we know again that these devices are about 90 to 95% efficient. So if we take a look at a 60 horsepower drive times 745.7, that's the conversion from horsepower to watts, we end up with 44,742 watts potential power consumption on this device. And so if we take a look at the 95% heat rejection uh, approximation, we're looking at about 2,200 watts lost to heat. So you're gonna have to actually pick a enclosure cooler that can address 2,200 watts of heat load. If we convert that 2,200 watts to BTUs, it's about 7,600 watts of cooling required, or 7,600 BTUs of cooling required. Sorry about that. The component heat load method goes further as we take a look at a 30 horsepower drive and a 10 horsepower drive. You can see that a 30 horsepower drive would reject about 1,100 watts of heat that we would have to cool. And a 10 horsepower drive produces about 373 watts that we would have to cool with some type of heat exchanger or cooling device. What does this mean to an average plant? Well, downtime cost can be very high depending upon industry. An automotive plant can lose up to 22,000 hours per minute, which is an incredible number. Data centers are about $8,800 per minute. And Fortune 500 companies feel that they lose about $46 million a year to downtime. 
because of lack of productivity or equipment just not working or the time it takes to fix it. So it's very important we keep our automation and control equipment up and running. Again, one of the major uh, demons out there is heat that uh, will, will take down a control system faster than anything. Topic of discussion here is sealed enclosure coolers for above ambient heat. We have a line called ACT HSC series sealed heat sink enclosure cooler you standard filter fans draw air in bring all kinds of debris and, and uh, VOCs and hazardous um, vapors and things like that which can attack the inside of a cabinet I was once at um, the Purdue Farms which is a large uh, chicken farm manufacturer they make eggs and uh, do wholesale chickens and at these facilities the ammonia from uh, just all of the uh, chickens being tied up in their coops, there's thousands of these chickens. That ammonia would get into the inside of the cabinet and cause the plastic components to go brittle as, in as little as six months. So you can see why having a sealed enclosure cooler, like our heat sink coolers, would be highly advantageous. So the air from the outside is helping cool the inside of the cabinet. So, and again, nothing from the outside ever gets to the inside. They're completely sealed. So this is what one of the HSC coolers looks like. This happens to be our single fan unit. And then you can see what some of the unsealed enclosure fan systems look like. These are very common in industry, but we would expect that if you really wanted to remain safe and keep your equipment running, you'd want something like a sealed enclosure cooler. And ACT is one of the few manufacturers that make this type of equipment. Again, just an overview of how these devices work. You can see with the HSC cooler that there is cold air coming in from the outside. And again, that air doesn't continue through the inside it hits the conductive center plate, and then the air is exhausted out through side fans. The same thing is going on through the inside of the cabinet. The hot cabinet air hits the conduction plate, and then the air is forced out through the side. So you're getting very, very good circulation in the internal cabinet. And again, we're 100% sealed. So what does the family look like for the heat sink coolers? Again, we are a UL recognized and listed product. Some of the products actually come with a, uh, a three prong cord. Some are hardwired. Our DC units are hardwired. The uh, 115 volt unit has a plug. The 220 uh, version has flying leads. And then they're available in three sizes. And these are conduction numbers, 22 watt per degree C, 45 watt per degree C, and 68 watts per degree C. And they're available in a wide range of voltages from 12 to 230 volts. And there you can see the different family numbers, HSC 22, 45, and 68. Taking a look at each one of these units, we take a look at those conduction numbers which match the part numbers and then figure out what it means in the amount of watts that we can dissipate inside the cabinet. So if we have a 22 watts per degree C unit, the way the industry rates these products is with a 20 degree C delta between the internal cabinet and the external ambient temperature. So an HSC 22 is capable of 440 watts of cooling with a 20 degree delta between the internal and external cabinet. If you go with a four fan unit, you can get up to 900 watts of cooling if we have a 20 degree delta, and the 68 is capable of almost 1400 watts of cooling. Nice part about these units is that only 3.7 inches protrudes into the inside of the cabinet. So it's very slim mounting because there's always the case where maybe you have some components that get very close to the door of the control cabinet. 
So you want to have something that's slim and easily mountable. The bottom range here, which you can review, are all the different current draws. These are highly efficient systems. And the fans are rated at L20, L10. And that means that they're rated for over 10,000 hours of continuous operation. And even at the end of that time period, they're still capable of 95% of their capacity to do cooling. So they're highly rated fans and should last probably in the range of about seven, five to seven years running in the field. The fans are replaceable. So if you did need to replace them, that is a uh, possibility. Just like in the chicken farming application, we do offer corrosion resistant versions with a 316 stainless steel cover, potted fans, and then electrofin coated fins so that if you have salt spray, all those VOC chemicals, ammonia, and so on, they will not destroy the surface because the electrofin is a highly bondable type corrosion coating and it's long lasting and uh, very uh, consistent in its, uh, in its ability not to peel off in a number of environmental conditions. So there you see the two fan unit and there's the single fan NEMA 4X version. We also have it in the HSC 68, that's the 1400 watt cooler. It's just not shown here in this particular uh, photo. Now with all of the selection information that you've gathered, you're gonna take a look at going into our website and coming into the enclosure cooling selection tool. And this is the tool on the right. It's a little hard to see, but what you're gonna do is put in all of your parameters. Uh, you're gonna put in the temperature range you're working with and whether you're using inches or millimeters. And then you can put in the cabinet size and what the expected heat load will be and what you think the uh, temperature on the inside to the outside of the cabinet will be. You can also make considerations on mounting and if it's exposed to sunlight, what the sun loading will be. And a major differentiator we find is that if you have insulation in the cabinet, it can greatly reduce the effects of sun loading wattage on the internal cabinet. And then from there, the software will calculate three different possibilities or three different solutions. And from there, it will actually, if you click on the solution, it will take you over to our e-commerce site where you can actually see the pricing depending upon voltage range. So that's available for our above ambient and sub ambient cooling systems. An interesting application that was conducted by one of our systems integrators, and system integrators are typically our best partners for this product because they have the ability to specify versus a panel shop that builds off the customer specification. The system integrators sometimes will do their own studies. In this particular case, this particular integrator in the Atlanta area did a study for six months on their rooftop uh, from about April to like September. And what they were able to do is record the performance of our unit, our HSC 22 unit, for a particular project that we'll show you coming up that it, uh, to make sure that it had ample cooling for this application that they were gonna be applying the product to. So here's a graph of what they discovered after multiple months of installation they found a carbon gray steel enclosure with one of our HSC 22s performed better than any of the other units. And that was a major decision in them deciding to apply our product in the So HSC applications. This was what the integrator chose after doing those extensive testing, he decided to go with our HSC 45 on a water booster pump station. And there are going to be over 45 to 113, depending upon when the project gets finished, of these pump stations throughout the Atlanta area. So we're able to 
completely cool the interior of the cabinet, which includes some motors, some drives, and then some transmission equipment so that they can remotely read these systems. It's probably like a Wi-Fi unit on the top so uh, that they can constantly update and monitor what's going on in the system. What happens is as the communities need more or less water, the pump speeds are increased or decreased in these pump control cabinets. Another application was at a wastewater plant on a weight scale. And what would happen is, is that during certain times of the year, the actual scale electronics would shut off because there was excessive heat in the cabinet. So by simply adding an HSC-22 up on the top there into the box, we were able to achieve enough circulation and heat rejection to keep these systems running. Here's an application on a Navy vessel that uses a transit case. So these technicians come out and do repairs, but they need their equipment inside of a case that is resistant to salt spray and other things they might encounter, water, waves, salt spray, you name it. This particular transit case can hold up to it. And you can see they're using the 4X version, which is the stainless steel version. Natural gas pipelines are also a target for these products. And you can see the HSC 68 cooler inside of this gas, uh, I think it's a, well, it's a transfer station. So this transfer station was cooled and that's a drive that you see in the right-hand picture. So we had to make sure that we had enough heat rejection capacity with the HSC 68, which gives us about 1400 watts of cooling again. And these were located at multiple sites throughout Colorado at these gas transfer stations. We're now going to go in another version of heat exchanger or above ambient cooler called our sealed heat pipe heat exchangers. It's utilizing heat pipe technology, which is essentially a hollow tube, which is filled with a working fluid. In this case, we use methanol, so we don't have to worry about freezing. So in the interior of the cabinet, when it gets warm, the methanol goes from a liquid state to a vapor state. It then travels to the outside of the cabinet and condenses back to a liquid. This exchange from vapor to liquid makes this device about a thousand times better thermal conductor than copper. And because it uses this heat pipe technology, there's virtually zero thermal resistance. So it's a highly effective cooling system between the interior to the exterior of the cabinet. Here you can see what one of these devices looks like. Heat pipes on the interior, heat pipes going to the exterior with a bonded center plate that doesn't allow any air to be exchanged from the interior to the exterior of the cabinet. The reason people pick the HSC is one for its quick response and the other is for the mounting technique. And they do have higher capacity ranges than the HSC, the, the, the I'm sorry, the, the uh, heat sink coolers. And again, 100%. The family has a wide range of solutions and voltages, just like the HSC family. The HPC comes in 15 watt, 40 watt, 50 watt, and 80 watts per degree C thermal conductance. That translates on the largest module, which is the HPC 80, to about 1600 watts of cooling. And then again, they're available in 12, 24, 48, 115 and 230 volts. This application was on a CNC machine. And in the top right hand corner, you can see an HPC 40 heat pipe cooler 40. There's a drive in the cabinet, which you can't see in the bottom here, but it effectively cools this system. This has been a customer of ours now for the last six years, and he's had great reliability and has standardized on this system to cool his cabinets. Finally, we're gonna get into the below ambient or sub ambient air conditioners or thermal electric. 
AC products come in a range that are rated in watts, everything from 1,000 to 5,000 watts. And these devices can be installed inside of control cabinets with only about 1.7 inches of protrusion depth. And they are again, So if we take a look at a side view mounting of the system, you can see that it's very slim going into the cabinet and then going through the evaporator side, the air comes in through the top and out through the bottom so we get very good circulation on the interior. And then the outside of the cabinet, the compressor side of the cabinet is sealed. And an interesting part of this, you could actually add ductwork if you wanted to. So a lot of different ways of utilizing this system. Again, 100% sealed. They're available in four ranges. And, and there's two different voltages. We offer them in 48 volt and 220 volt, depending upon wattage. Here's an application of what they look like installed. Again, very minimum space taken up on the inside of the control cabinet. handy program programmable station on the inside so what you're going to do is select your temperature range where you want the air conditioner to to come on or off you can also set dead band and the interesting part with this product is that you can do remote settings by modbus so you can set up a whole series of these throughout your plant and network them together and monitor the performance of all the air conditioners within that network so again, if you go into the selection guide, the selection guide will pick out the correct product, whether it's a heat exchanger or an air conditioner or potentially a thermal electric cooler. So very easy products to order and specify. The other thing that's available to you is that ACT has a variety of ways of ordering the product. You can order directly online. You can send us a PO or if you have a particular distributor that you work with, we highly recommend that you go through them because your path to getting an order is a lot simpler. And we basically, anything that is ordered online, we try to refer those to local distributors to come work with you because it's always better to have local stock and availability if you do frequently use these products and these types of solutions. So we hope you've gotten a lot out of this just show you a couple custom designs. So here you can see we can do custom paint and custom front covers depending upon an application. This particular application had issues with, um, with arcing because it was used on a uh, power pole. So we developed a special cover and extra bonding in the piece of equipment, the HSC 22 version, heat pipe cooler, applications sometimes customers do not want to use just a gray type unit they'd like the uh, cooling system to match the color of their product so we can do custom paint with probably as little as a quantity of 10 pieces or more but just ask us and uh, we'll put a quote together for you the presentation will now go into the question and answer series so let's get to that